G'day, I'm James. Welcome to my front yard in beautiful Arizona. In fact, it's a lovely evening here and I'm about to sit down and enjoy it by thinking about some mathematics. I'll sit on my chair, put my books on my table and have a grand time tonight. Except I have a problem. My table here on this rough ground is nice and stable, but my chair is not. It's all wobbly. I don't like sitting on wobbly chairs. So I've got a problem. In fact, I'm wondering now what's different between my table and my chair. Well, you might notice that actually my table has three legs, whereas my chair has four, and that turns out to be the key difference. In fact, no matter where you put a three-legged object on the ground, oh, it'll always be stable, which is kind of curious, and obviously chairs need not be that way. What's going on? Well, the fact is three legs are good because I can always put two legs on the ground, no matter how rough that ground is, and just tilt the table down until the third leg touches. No worries, that assures me a stable position no matter where I choose to put the table. In fact, the camera right now filming me is on a tripod, tripod, three feet. They're deliberately three-footed because no matter how rough the ground is, you can always find a stable position with a tripod. In fact, in the olden days, when you want to milk a cow, you got a little milking stool, and stools back then were always three-legged because no matter how rough the barn floor was, a three-legged stool would always be placed down in a stable position no matter where you wanted to put it. Great. Four-legged objects, clearly not. So what could I do about my four-legged problem here with the chair? I have a math problem. In fact, I can see there's a lovely way to solve this problem uh, using mathematics. Let's do it right now. So what I've got here, I've got uh, definitely two stable legs. In fact, we always can find two stable legs. In this case, this opposite corner are my good legs. So I'll call those the good legs. I'm gonna keep hold of those good ones. And right now, it's the other pair of legs, the bad ones. They're each hovering just above the ground. Oh, they're just hovering above the ground. Um, I could actually make them touch the ground if I could somehow push this chair down, make my good legs go below, and have these ones be good and be on the ground instead. But I can't actually do that because this is on rock right now. I can't actually push this into the ground. But that does tell me I could make any pair of legs I want good by maybe pushing the chair into the ground. So right now, okay, my good diagonal pair are perfectly surfaced with this rough ground. My bad pair are above. What I'm going to do now is take this chair on a journey. I'm just going to move it around, but I'm going to bring it back to the same spot it was on before, but I'm going to make sure I've switched the roles of the legs. Ah, so my good legs, which are the ones I'm still holding in my hand, are now above the ground, but they're not good anymore. And the other pair are on the surface, all right, because I've just switched their positions. They're on, that, that was, that's where the surface position was before. Ah, however, my good legs are meant to be good. So I'm going to push this chair down, at least theoretically, to make my good pair good, and now the other pair are below the ground. Now think what I just said. We started off in a position with my bad pair above the ground, rotated, rotated in a nice smooth continuous way, and brought it to a position where I'm going to gonna have the bad pair below the ground. That was a nice smooth continuous transformation from above the ground to below the ground. There must be some nice intermediate spot where actually the bad pair is on the ground. For a positive number, down to a negative number, I must have passed through zero. So that means my good pair's on the ground, right now above for the bad pair, below for the bad pair, there's some intermediate position between zero and 90 degrees, oh, like this one, where on the ground and zero above, zero below the ground for the bad pair, that means stable. We've just shown on rough ground, turning a four-legged object like this, at most 90 degrees, you'll find a position where all four legs are stable. That is beautiful. Now, I, I'm pulling the wall over your eyes a little bit here. Uh, the ground I've got here is actually made of rocks. It's a very discontinuous surface. So actually, this the argument really should work only for a nice, smooth, continuous surface. Okay, because I'm using something called the intermediate value theorem here. We want everything to be nice, smooth, and continuous. Um, if this ground was like extremely bumpy, like had spikes all over, then I got troubles because the spikes, some of the spikes were going to go through the chair and I couldn't do it at all. So there are some caveats with this. But actually, mathematicians have studied this problem and they analyzed not just square objects like this, but rectangular tables can always be found to have a nice position on the ground that's stable as long as the ground isn't too wild. Keep it continuous, don't make it too spiky, and all will be good. So there we are. So now I'm all set with my stable chair. Now, this thing I can put down anywhere I want. <gasps> stable. I'm now set to have a lovely, relaxing evening thinking about some more mathematics. All right, thanks so much.